is about propane or natural gas. As a matter of fact, let's light our, our flame of knowledge. All right. So, uh, like always, please, uh, on Facebook or YouTube, type in your questions, and we will try to answer them for you if, on the air. If not, we'll get back to you. Because, uh, you know, if you went to a real doctor, a real doctor, and asked the question, he didn't really know the answer to exactly. Would you want him guessing? No. You know, doctor always needs to check his books. Uh, and also, if you're interested in being a dealer, please let us know. Uh, we have literature that we can send you. And um, so we're here to talk about the snorkel or anything else you have in mind that you'd like to talk about. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to get back to my get back to my water and water here. I got one more thing to say about that. But uh, I still am allowing input if you have a tool that keeps working even when you're not using it. Uh, let me know. We might have a ninja meter for you. We love to give away ninja meter tachometers because we're a nonprofit organization. All right. So, Mr. Producer Man. Well, as always, we're uh, waiting for your questions on Facebook or YouTube, but we do have some questions. Dr. Hughes' favorites from the archives. <laughs> I don't like them. These are, uh, I like to call them oldies but goodies. What's that CBD stuff you're talking <laughs> <laughs> You got to watch it something like that. THC in it or something. All right, All right. Let's have the let's, infamous let's questions. Here we go. There we go. Everybody's a winner. This is from <laughs> Kevin via email. Kevin says, I presume that refueling gasoline while the generator is running is quite dangerous, but what about plugging or unplugging a propane tank? For example, if I was running on propane and knew that I was nearing the end of the bottle, could I switch to gasoline, replace the propane bottle, and switch back to propane without shutting down the generator. In a hundred words or less. All right, so I love the fact that I don't get to see those ahead of time. That's must be an oldie, oldie, oldie. Uh, I think it makes it, it makes it more authentic as they say in the business. Yeah, more authentic. Well, I'm as real as they get, brother. Well, the answer is uh, can't remember how it was phrased. <laughs> it was uh, well, like you just put it back up. For a second. <laughs> yeah, can I talk while I'm looking at it? Hey, cool, great. All yeah. right. They don't want to look at me anyway. Yes, can I switch to gasoline? Absolutely. Replace the propane bottle and switch back to propane without shutting down the generator. You absolutely can. Uh, that is not an issue at all. It takes a little skill, a little trial and error to, to adjust the load block and so forth or uh, just as the gasoline is is fading away, you turn the propane on. However, you can also have a T assembly where, or a changeover regulator, where if one cylinder goes out, the other cylinder comes on, and it allows you to unhook the one that ran out and put a full one back on that side, and off you go again. So. Uh, they do it on campers, you know, two 30-pound cylinders on a camper. And uh, they'll switch back and forth, you know, so you don't have to, you know, be interrupted. This is getting hot. So uh, there you go. So no, propane's very, but he is right. Filling any hot engine with gasoline is just, whoo, not a good thing to do right there. I was just reading at the gas pump this morning in my truck. I wish I had a propane truck, but mine is a gasoline truck. We talked about gasoline vapors being explosive. I don't know if that's a fact or not. I think that's highly flammable, but I don't think they're explosive. I don't think any hydrocarbon that is explosive. You can confine it like we did Wolfie, you know, confine it to a space with the right air fuel mixture and uh, you can blow up stuff. Blow your face off. Blow well, actually make holes and things, but yeah. <laughs> so we uh, we do have some folks that are interacting with our stream on Facebook. Hey. So we uh, we just have a comment. This is from Douglas. 
Douglas says, hi, Doc. Love the snorkel. Your products are awesome. Hey, Douglas. Doug, Douglas. What was his name? Douglas. Yeah. Thank you, Douglas. Appreciate that. And we also heard from Aaron. He says he loves his snorkel also. And he does have a question as well. We need to get a snorkel shirt to give out to people like that. Let's do it. We'll do that if we ever make any money. All right. So Aaron <laughs> says, I have a Predator 2000 watt generator, and I am finding while running on natural gas, I am only able to draw 1,300 watts, and the voltage drops down from 125 volts to 110 volts. Am I pushing the generator too much? Well, um, whatever you're rated at, um, your equipment's rated at. If it, if it can handle... Uh, see, like, I remember a printer was... Uh, uh, two, you can go to 107 without an issue on an electronic printer. Uh, it was a big um, laser printer. So 110 volts should be completely accept acceptable uh, for most equipment. And if you look at it, oh, do we have anything electrical here to look at? But see what the electrical, hey Sean, find something electrical, uh, printer or something. Just see what it says for uh, AC input. Uh, so, uh, no, you're not pushing it. it you're, sounds like you're right at the, uh, the edge where it needs to be. Now, I don't know, what are those, at 2000, what did that put out for full? I was trying to look it up, Doc. Uh, yeah. I don't, 2000 was Surge, right, on mm -hmm. the Predators? I'm on I Harbor think it's Freight's 18, website. Isn't it 1800, I think, on that? 1800. I don't know if we got 1800 out of them or not, but... Uh, Hey, we can run the video. <laughs> no, we don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even bored with my own videos. <laughs> it reminds me that everybody loves Raymond. She said, don't you want to write the great American novel? He said, I don't even want to read it. <laughs> so it's the same thing. I don't want to see my own videos. Uh, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to try to find that some other way. I'm on their website. Uh, but anyway, no. If you Did you find anything? No. Oh, come on. You know, there's some lazy... Let me walk off the set. Here, you take over, and let me look at something over here. It's got to be something with an input. In the meantime, we'll show a picture of Wolfie blowing up. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> now, this is a... Uh, this is one of those indoor... Makes your cell phone supposed to work better until they... Quit supporting it and shut it down. Um, let's see if the input is. You got? Can you see? Since you're too lazy to go get it, at least look at it and see what it says for voltage input. Zero point one five fifteen. Zero point one five amps. How many volts? The V. Thank you, 100. See, so a lot of things are 108, 107. So, uh, so if you're at 110, that's good. I think we over answered that question. Hey, we also, uh, while, we were, while we were researching that information, we had our friend Gary pitch in, and uh, actually Aaron as well, uh, that it is rated for 1600. So he mentioned he was getting 1300 out of natural gas. Yes, it depends on his natural gas source too. You may be able to crank up uh, the pressure on that a little bit too, um, and get a little more out of it. But uh, they they claim that natural gas has a thousand BTU per cubic foot, and that's an average. So some is lighter, some is heavier. Depends on time of year. Sometimes they'll even auxiliary the the gas with propane. They'll add uh, some propane to increase the BTU content. So a lot of it does depend on the BTU content of your natural gas, which you wouldn't notice on a stove or something like that, but you would definitely notice it on an engine. But 16, huh? So 16, 2000? Cool. Yes, yeah, so uh, we, we have another question hey. here from Daniel. He says, what do you think of synthetic oil instead of regular oil for a generator? I love it. The thing you need to do though is check the ash content. That's what, uh, when, when synthetics first came out, they were high in ash and I don't know why. I did the research in like 99, 98 and uh, everything I found was, you know, everything was high ash and, uh, and 
we used to tell customers don't use synthetic because of the high ash content, but uh, I checked not long ago and uh, some of them were zero ash, which is interesting because on gas engines, um, it can be helpful. And I can't remember why, because I don't like gasoline. Uh, it's an evil product, evil, evil product. But uh, yeah, uh, look, for, look for the ash content. And I don't know the differences between, I think we did used to recommend, was it like Mobile One Synthetic? Mobile One. We're not supposed to name names, so I didn't say Mobile One. Well, the Exxon Superflow wasn't synthetic, but uh, yeah, the Exxon Superflow was the lowest ash off the shelf, regular motor oil. But uh, definitely, if you can find a synthetic, uh, what's funny is a lot of synthetics are made from natural gas, which is just really a neat thing. But, you know, it all comes out of the same hole in the ground, same barrel. Uh, that crude oil, when you look at that crude oil, it's black. Yeah, you get natural gas, propane. Well, you know all that stuff. I told you before, don't get me going. All right, so the uh, the questions on the live feed have kind of slowed down, so let's <laughs> go back to the library. Uh, where's your question? Of questions. So what? I mean, what are you going to yeah. do about it, Mr. Producer I'm, Man? I'm going to back to the library. Going back to the library. Did you say library? I might have said library. Library. I've just returned from a trip uh, to the south, and... Uh, so I was affected. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you were. Here we go. I, I said he was affected and he got mad at me. I've been warned by the internet that a 20 pound <laughs> bottle of propane will not run this generator <laughs> because the bottle will freeze up. Can you offer any guidance about that? And leave the thing up for a second. And how to avoid it, if true. Okay, leave it up for a second. Okay, I've been warned by the internet. I love that. That is so cool. You know, the little warning of whoop, whoop, whoop. I didn't know the internet warned anybody. Where you, and actually, you can't even go to the internet. People say, I'm going to go to the internet. You can't. There is no such thing. You cannot take somebody down the street, open the door, and say, here's the internet. But anyway, back to the question. Uh, whoever got this question from our customer obviously did not maintain the integrity of the question, such as, what generator? <laughs> You know, yeah, if it's a four-cylinder generator, it'll freeze up. What was the rest of the question? You took it down again. People don't want to look at me. Yeah, uh, because the bottle will freeze up. Uh, so that has a lot to do with temperature, ambient temperature. If it's if it's in the middle of winter and you got, you got, if it's in the middle of winter and you have um, wind chill, you know, as wind chill affects you, it affects propane. So. Wind blowing across the cylinder will definitely not allow it to pick up ambient heat it needs. Because you know what, a, a propane cylinder is almost like a heat pump. When you know it, it works off of the transition of heat. But anyway, uh, not to get off base, <clears throat> you can take a 20 pound cylinder and keep it somewhat near the exhaust uh, where you can safely hold your hand, not get burnt uh, on your exhaust and it'll keep your cylinder warm and you can use it for virtually any size engine up to 16 20 horse possibly but uh, it all depends on how much heat it's picking up some people like to mm, dig a hole in the ground set them in the ground because they'll pick up heat from the ground so uh, warm water bath can work i've heard of people using heating blankets and heating pads but it's not, to me that's counterproductive but uh, yeah, those are your those are your solutions. But the exhaust, I mean, the exhaust is putting out. Uh, man, I can't remember now. Last time we shot an exhaust, uh, it's many hundreds of degrees if you get too close. So if if you can keep it somewhere in the eighty degree range, you know, and it's not even a bad idea to put a thermometer there. You know, say hey, it's eighty degrees right here. All right, set the cylinder right there, and it can't overheat and. Uh, activate the relief valve. All right, great job, Doc. That's <laughs> so you'll appreciate this. This is actually a real time question, but it's a real time from email. Read <laughs> real time email. Okay, go ahead. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, 
Real so time. this is an active issue from our sport desk and a customer um, emailed in and they were concerned because they bought a snorkel kit and they were reading that um, I guess our instruction manual warns people about running the generator indoors and so forth. This person is actually going to be putting this on an RV that has an Onan generator that's housed in a compartment under the bedroom of the fifth wheel trailer. And they were wondering if that meant that they should not run the product. <laughs> you know my memories about that. Little. <laughs> so we have, uh, they call that a basement actually, I guess, in the motorhome. Yeah, so you have it mounted in the basement of the motorhome. Uh, if it's properly ven ventilated, that's not indoors. I mean, it, the, the the human byproduct tanks are under there too. I mean, you know, you don't want that in your living space. So it, it's about common sense. I mean, as a matter of fact, you can put a um, you can put you're not allowed to have propane on a boat because uh, vapors will settle to the bilge. But you're allowed to build a compartment where the cylinder goes in from the outside, or you can put it from the inside and seal it. But anyway, if, if you can have a sealed compartment from the living space, then it's not part of the being indoors. It's part of the great outdoors. So uh, they weren't warned from the internet too, were they? We might have some internet cops out there trying to uh, sh sh uh, mess with our customers there. I think you're making this stuff up. No, but the, the customer goes on to um, to ask if they should have an electric fuel shutoff. So is, this, is this a real customer now? Yeah, this oh, is real. cool. I thought you were messing up my head. No, right. I, I'm not that good <laughs> to make this Thank stuff you, up. Thank you, Mr. Customer. <laughs> All right. Go Thank ahead. So but, but, but he's not live. This is he, an, e an email thread. He's not, but he's a live Well, email. we hope he, he, he is alive. He's asking the questions, but it's not in real time. This is a current open issue. Okay. That's where this information is okay, coming from. Yeah. So he goes on to ask if he should have an electric fuel shut off. So if the fuel supply shuts off when the generator is not running, and I thought that might be something that our audience would appreciate hearing about. Uh, if used outdoors, uh, our zero governor regulator is designed as a safety shut off device. Now, if some customers opt for a secondary electrical shutoff just for their own peace of mind. So if, you know, people buy insurance on all kinds of things. Uh, they get a boat and they buy insurance because, you know, something happens. So it's a peace of mind. Just knowing a, you don't have to worry about your boat. Well, if you want to spend, that would be an insurance product. So if you want to spend on that insurance, it's around, what, 75 bucks, I think, for a high quality shutoff device. Uh, Definitely, it's, you know, some people are, you know, just want to be double safe. I believe in Canada, the rule is they have to have a double shut off, but uh, I haven't read the Canadian laws recently. Can you keep up with the U.S. laws? But, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's nothing wrong with adding a secondary shut off device. just has to make sure it functions correctly. Like, um, there are... We have ways, we have ways of making it work for you. So you'll need to get an, an additional relay or we have vacuum switches to turn them on, turn them off, uh, like if you're not there. So uh, there you go. Absolutely. All right. Well, we do have another stock question here for you. Stock question. We used to say old. Uh, yeah, from yeah. the archive. From our archives. And this is a, what accessories do you have available with Motor <laughs> Snorkel? <laughs> Good one. We have everything. We have all the brass fittings you could ever wish for, shutoff devices, uh, electric solenoids that go in front of regulators. We have wireless remote starts. We have hoses of all links. I think we've We've even done a rubber hose for a customer that was a uh, hundred and some feet long. He wanted to be able to roll out his hose and hook up to his generator and roll it back up. So we have it all. There's just about 
nothing that you could need that we don't have or have not gotten for a customer in the past 25 years. So I hope that helps. All right. So we got a couple more comments here. Um, James from Long Island, New York says, Long Island, New York saying hello. Hey, I love Billy Joel from Long Island. Man, that was one of the best videos ever made. But anyway, yes. Uh, so here are some requests for future shows. <laughs> Please go off the air. No. Please go. Can you make uh, it five minutes or less? Um, so Gary suggests an idea is to demonstrate the automatic start kit uh, along with the tutorial. And he says he just repaired a champion generator with a remote start and thought it was a cool feature. Mm. Um, That's so, a good idea. So, yeah, we could do that. Hey, it'd be interesting to just hear if the audience has any other demonstrations they would like to see whether it's generator related i'll tell you what we'll do we're getting ready to do my john deere ztr mm -hmm. i'm gonna put remote start on that thing so it's warmed up when i get on it all right so that's you what we'll do it, you heard it here first Be the first one to remote start a, a lawnmower there we go <laughs> generators are boring but yeah lawnmowers uh, lawnmowers are the new hotness yeah you know i like that what else I could do? All right. Well, if anyone out there has other ideas for no, that's a good one. demonstrations that's a good one. that they'd like to see, then we're we're happy to oblige. Yes, we are. I have to look that word up, but oblige. Yes. All right. So um, I guess the, the comments have kind of slowed off. Um, dealt with our archive questions. Right. If anybody cares... The answer to this question was, well, that 8.4 pounds of water weighed nothing in here when set inside this vessel. Now, this is what messes with my head, all right? Somebody can explain this in details that even a doctor could understand. If you put a scale under here, all right, and, it, and you had 100 gallons, and let's just say the scale read 800 pounds, right? When you put that 8.4 pounds of water in that water, what's the scale going to read? Everyone would say, duh, it should read 808.4. But it weighs nothing. So how can you add 8.4 gallons, yet it weighs nothing? But the scale is now going to read 808.4 gallons because it has 101 gallons. Okay. 101 equals that. So anyway, I guess I should have brought that up earlier because I gave an engine meter away just to hear a, an intelligent comment as to how that's possible. But uh, maybe I'm just not thinking right. I need to find a better way of waking up in the morning because those things just aggravate me. All right, Mr. Producer, I guess we're wrapping it up, huh? I say let's uh, wrap it up. We don't want to drag it out, so we wrap it up. Uh, go. All right, well, remember, you can always type in your questions. Uh, if you have anything to say, comments, info at uscarb.com. Like us, love us, whatever, on eBay. Not on eBay can't like us on eBay, can you? <laughs> uh, but on the face, that Facebook and the face too. Yeah. I have to look into Twitter. I don't Twitter. Oh, wait, Twitter? We, we have a graphic for this. We have a Twitter. Yeah. Didn't we have something with the fingers? I don't know. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, it's See, the share should be a pointer. See, like and share. When you, it's got an yeah, arrow. That's what it's doing. Huh? Hey. We're official now. All right. Well, we appreciate you being here with us, sharing this moment in life together. You'll never get this past uh, 25 minutes back. If I could give it to you, I would. It's actually 32 minutes. I can say what you mean. <laughs> All right. Well, the official torch of knowledge has now been extinguished. So see you back next week. Tuesday at 2 o'clock, if all works out well. If not, we'll be here at 2.05. 2.05. This is 
Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I always say this, but maybe my producer needs to read this. You have a great week, month, and no matter what, be a nice human. Thank <laughs> you.